600 rejections. I want you to feel that for a second. 600 rejections and still not able to find a job. That's hard. That's tough. That's, that's difficult. Hey, thank you for the five gifted subs. Appreciate that. The tech industry is kind of a mess right now. It's becoming increasingly hard for people to find jobs in tech. And it's particularly hard for any software engineers trying to get into tech right now, like bootcamp grads or recent computer science graduates. All of this. I do think being a computer science graduate is much easier to find a job. And one of the big reasons why it's much easier to find a job is that typically you're going to have a career fair. I, I, I mean, for me, career fairs were widely consequential for me to be able to get what I needed to get. And I was very, very, very happy. Uh, that's how I got my job. A lot of people here will talk about the value of a career fair. And the big reason why career fairs are so nice is that you get a chance to talk to a human. And you, you get a chance to at least interact with one person. Career fairs have sucked, in my opinion. I think it's because you're not good at talking to people, right? Like, real talk, career fairs are amazing. You walk up, you get to talk to the person, you get to tell them how excited you are about this, that, and the other. And, like, this is your one chance to not be an application in a system, but for somebody to take your application, write, like, oh, that guy was pretty interesting, and then set it down. You know what I mean? Like, you actually get a chance to get filtered by not, by not job recruiter, and not computer system. You get filtered by another engineer. It's very, very good. That For me, that was one of the best ways for me to get a job was the career fair. I thought it was really, really good. This made me think of a time in my life when I was struggling to get a software engineering job where my happiness, my direction in life, and... The speed up and him breathing makes him look like he's having a panic attack. And it's talking about this direction and everything, and look at him. Direction and just make, dude. He, he, the the man's the man's having a panic attack as we talk. Okay, this isn't actually sped up. This is real life normal speed. Um, also, this is really bad for your neck. Okay, do you know you know I know people that had to go to PT for quite some time because they actually shifted the connection point between their spine and their neck, like right here. And it like shifted forward and the amount of like PT you have to go through by looking down like that is actually really bad. Tech neck. It's real. Don't do it. Like really don't sit like this. When you're young, it's easy. You can do it. But like I hate to tell you this, but everyone becomes 30 or you die really young. But mostly everybody becomes 30. You should try to embrace the neutral spine. You know what I mean? You should try to embrace that neutral spine. 30 or death, your choice. <laughs> your choice and my sense of self-worth were at an all-time low. This is the story the panic attack of the is really pain funny. of finding my first software engineering job, my journey through it, and my advice to anyone stuck in the same situation. Okay, let's go. To get a grasp of the situation, we have to get a small glimpse of what I was like in college. Depending on okay. which version of Kevin you encountered during his college years, you would have found vastly different mindsets. During Absolutely, right? I mean, you're going from 18 to 22 if you're like a traditional college person. The level of stupid I was at 18 versus 22 is so vast. It's impossible to possibly put those two things together. Hey, Jetski, how you doing, buddy? I hope you're doing well. My first year of college, I was primarily career focused. My main goal was to get a job at Facebook. By the time my fourth year had rolled around, though, Guy clearly watched the social network. He saw whatever that actor's name get backstabbed, and he was like, hell yeah. I'm getting a job at Facebook. Honestly, I guarantee you, that's probably, that's probably what happened, and honestly, that movie also inspired me to make my first startup. In 2008 or 2009, whenever it happened, I watched that movie, and afterwards, I came out so horned up to make my own startup. I did a startup. It was awesome. It was fantastic. It actually got me so good at programming because I got – not Andrew Garfield, the other one. The, the Mark Zuckerberg's character, whatever his name is, I got so horned up to do a startup that it actually gave me all of the abilities that I got to be able to get a real job. And when I went to go to a real job and talk to people, man, people were so stoked because I actually had some sort of idea of like how to build big software at that point. I hyperfixated. Oh yeah, of course I hyperfixated. Yeah, My I know Andrew Garfield was the one that gets the back shifted significantly. Laziness and procrastination; those were the themes of my fourth year. That is so funny. This is like, he literally has the exact opposite of story of me. I went into college and failed out due to drug usage. 
I went back to college, failed due to drug usage. And then I went back to college again, and then I didn't fail out due to drug usage. I actually became a star student, you know, and I became more and more motivated. And as I was able to start doing classes that were like the actual computer side of things, it made me so much more excited. By the time I was being, by the time I was done with school, I wanted to be in school more. When I first started out, it was like all those stupid high school classes. I hated high school classes, right? College classes are just harder high school classes. Just the worst. But then you actually get into it. Did you ever go back for a master's degree? Yeah, I was uh, I was partly into my master's degree before I started working at uh, Netflix. Um, gen eds and college are a scam. They're, they're absolutely. I was getting my uh, degree in ML. I was uh, or really AI, like traditional AI, because at that point, reinforcement learning was just starting to come around and I hand worked and built a lot of like models and all that. I've shown this a couple times, but, you know, I wear this as both a uh, as a badge of honor and as a uh, and also as a uh, as a badge of shame. I wrote an entire neural network in old JavaScript. You can see this. This is an entire, look at that. You got that get calculated sigma, radial basis function initialized, feed forward, back prop, error hidden. Uh, this is for a certain specific one with an RBF network because there's not really that kind of stuff. We got ANFIS network, adaptive neural fuzzy inference systems. You know, like I was building all, we were building all the things. You know what I mean? Building all those things. Look at all that matrix bonanzas. Look at that matrix multiply. But why JavaScript? Because I was just learning JavaScript. And so, you know, I've always carried this mentality, which is you do the thing that you're trying to learn about, right? Like for me, I always build whatever I'm supposed to build in something that I'm trying to learn. And so it's like I did all this in JavaScript because I was just trying to learn JavaScript. I didn't know JavaScript. I didn't know how any of these things work. So I was trying to learn it. And so you can see like this is me learning it, right? I had no idea what I was doing prototype assigned like I'm, I'm out here assigning prototypes my learning rate learning rate effed me over and over again i'll tell you that much i used you know but you gotta remember this was 11 years ago yeah this was 11 years ago when i was getting my master's you know these are old days remember n the land of of neural networks has has genuinely changed okay the mlps was the ways to be okay and MLPs, you know, you're just doing like a little bit of backprop, a little backpropagation of error rate. And it's just like pure calculations. You know what I mean? Require clusterfuck? Yeah, there, yes, there was that. Wherever that was, there was clusterfuck. That was a real library. Okay. That was for doing K means, right? For our clustering. Yeah, for doing all them sweet clusters. Uh, all right, let's get back to that thing. Anyways, I just had the exact opposite experience. My attention was all over the place. And I didn't take time to plan my post-college life. Instead, I was distracted by other things like socializing or making friends. And I act Did he just do two groups of socializing and making friends as if those were different? Yeah, socializing or making friends? Hmm, suspicious. Uh, no, but anyways, like, I mean, I totally get this because you, 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 college does give you this, this illusion of being very meaningless. But by the way, WTF, no, really, this is how you get a job, is you socialize and make friends. You just got to make friends in your group. I think there's this thing that happens to a lot of people where they go into programming, and they're not dorks. Does that make sense? They're like, they're not dorks. They're not people that are like really into computers. And so then they're around other people that are dorks, and they're like, ew, I want to go make real friends. Right. And then they go off and they, they, they don't even realize like you just make friends with the people that are interested in the same things as you. And it actually makes first off, you get friends for life. But two, you actually create like great networks where you guys can help each other get jobs. I, I think it's crazy. Like, you know, you should make friends with people who are like who just are around you trying to go out of your way to be like, oh, these guys are stupid while you're that person also. It's not going to help. I don't think he did this. I don't know if he did this. I'm not saying he did this. I'm just saying I've seen this happen. I watched it happen. I watched quite a few friends started off as really great students, and then they quit being our friends and been other people's friends, and their grades were all suffering, and they're trying to be, like, too cool. But you're getting a computer science degree, dog. You're a dork. You literally – you're like Bill Gates jumping over a chair, okay? You're not awesome. That's the, it's okay. And it's okay not to be a dork. Like socializing is how we got funding for your projects. It really is like, that's okay. Be Bill Gates jumping over the chair and just, just like, just own it, man. No, the thing is, is that the thing that's worse 
is people who try to pretend like they're not that. Right? Go in there, armpits sweating, yelling something, yelling something about like developers and just being okay with it. Like that's 10 times better than the person that's really trying not to be that person, right? You're drinking your coffee before it was cool. You're hipstered out of your mind, right? Get out of here. I heard a great uh, – I can't tell you the joke. Never mind. I can't tell you the joke. I can't tell you the joke until the 21st. I'll tell you the joke then. Actively put off thinking about the future until it was too late. I didn't have any real software internship experience. I didn't know any web frameworks. I didn't know how to interview for software companies. And By the way, that's a huge mistake. If you're in college – like that's the goal of your junior year. Your sole goal of your junior year is not to get the best grades. Your sole goal is not to be the most social. Your sole goal is to find that effing career fair, talk to every last person you know, and you try to get that internship for three three months. And if you can't get an internship for three months at some company, go to your school. Try to do an internship for one of the grad programs because there's they're always looking for people to build software for some sort of research project. There's like so many ways you can go about doing that, but you got to go like you got to go hard and you got to find that cuz that's going to make such a big difference in your life. This is not so so I I I hate this. Honestly, I hate this. I guarantee you he was told 900 times to do these things. There wasn't a class that didn't go by my junior year where teachers weren't saying do these things. It's not school that fails people. It's it's people that fail people like 90% of the time. Like you're right. There's some institutions that aren't good. But my guess is if you're at UCLA, you probably have really good teachers that are there trying to tell you how like how to do things. Yeah, he just told us he failed himself. Yeah, I feel bad for the guy because you know what? So many people do this. So many people do this. School is extremely outdated, though. You know what? I actually disagree with this take generally. The reason why I disagree with that take generally is that every single person that's coming out of a boot camp is immediately useful. They come out. They have all the skills to pay the bills. You know why? Because they know React. They know Tailwind. They're on Facebook. They've built the MongoDB, right? They've done it all. I get it. They're immediately useful, but they have no direction and no foundation other than just building like these apps that are just immediately practical. So they have a lot harder thing to learn there. They have to literally go outside of work and learn extremely boring, awful topics like compilers, like compilers is fun, but it's also really awful. Like it's a hard, it's arduous once you get beyond any sort of amount. Like you really have to be committed. You have to go out there and learn what operating systems, it's hard. You really have to think about these things. Oh, you want to learn like computer languages? Again, you have to go out there and really like read about how these things work. It's difficult, okay? And so to grow as a post boot camp grad is really, really, really hard. I'm not saying it's impossible. It's just really, really hard. A software engineer coming out, a CS student, sure, you're absolutely right. They're coming out the gates not nearly as useful. But you know what they do have? They have data structures down. They can tell you exactly why the HTML is the way the shape it is and why general trees make sense and how to walk general trees and how to do all those things, right? They get it. They get the time-space trade-offs that are happening, okay? Oh, they understand uh, JavaScript. Why is it operating the way it is? Well, I've done a compilers class. I can tell you why this is not so efficient. I can tell you why these things happen. Sure, they're not as efficient, but they can tell you a lot more about the system. Of course, they can tell you about a general tree. Of course, they can tell you about compilers. Of course, they can tell you about these things. They just don't know how to practically apply them. One year on the job, and they've applied a lot more knowledge, and it's easy to catch up. Like, this is not hard to be. This is not hard to do. This is why you can come out in six months. This is hard to do. This is why it takes many years. I'm not saying it's great. I'm not saying it's perfect. I think they should teach some more practical. Like, there, it'd be great to have industry standard experience classes. Absolutely fantastic. It just makes it a lot easier to grow. Because you have foundation, whereas I think these people come across without all that foundation. It makes it a lot harder to grow. Like this gap is huge. This gap is hard. You know what I mean? A, a, dude, a CS student that went through a boot camp is going to come out pretty animal. Like they're going to they're going to be ready to kick some ass. They're going to come out pretty OP because they have all of that foundation. Plus, like here's a bunch of modern standard things that you know startups are looking for. 
What about boot camp grads going to so- uh, college? Uh, honestly, I worry much more about boot camp grads going to so- uh, college just because the first couple years are going to be really boring. Definitely try to test out and challenge courses. Like you don't want to skip data structures. You don't want to dis- skip discrete math or advanced data structures or any of those things. But you also have like a bunch of, you know what I mean? You also have a bunch of steps that you need to take that I think is going to be really difficult that that you're just going to find extremely boring, right? As a bootcamp grad, I 100% agree here. That's why I've worked super hard to fill the gaps. Yeah, I think you just have to work harder because I was stupid and someone just told me what to study and I passed a class, right? It means I just accidentally got lucky. It doesn't mean that, you know, the schools fails them in that they aren't getting practical experience. They used to. No, no. Actually, that, that, is, that is absurdly incorrect. College has always been for the rich person to, be, to learn how to leisure well. It's only recently changed. So no, school is not failing people. School has become more practical than it's ever been. I personally think like a good two-year boot camp is like where things should be. Like if you could have a good two-year boot camp that really like – how like really hounds the data structures pushes a good compiler course that really makes people learn a, you know a, you know like learn linux well like and makes them actually like useful like trade school i actually think computer science should be more of a trade school than it is uh a a university thing i think a trade school would be a lot lot a lot a lot a lot a lot a lot better uh i don't want to start a two year boot camp honestly uh, the the problem i have with that is that I mean, I do want to start those kind of things. Of course I do. I think it'd be great, and I think I could be very successful at it. But I also think that it's really, really difficult. Uh, It would be very, very hard to do it successfully, and I'd want to do it the best as possible and to do it the best as possible. It would just be – it would be like a life's work, right? I'd have to take like a year and a half off just to focus on like how we need to set this thing. It would just take a long, long time to get it done well. And I wanted to be able to do it well. You know what I mean? You need a team of people. It'd be very hard. Two years sounds good. I think that's how long it takes to do a CS without all the boring. Yeah, exactly. That's why I'm saying like you could do the practical mix. Like I would want someone coming out of my boot camp to have built some sort of Redis-like clone, to have built HTTP, to have built Git that understands like these basic things that have built servers that have done stuff, right? But that also understands compilers that have built their own DSL that has executed it. Because here's the thing. If you have built your own DSL and your own compiler. When you're at work and someone says, we should make a DSL for this, you can say, first off, slow down. You don't know anything about compilers. Let's take a step back, okay? Do we really want a DSL? I've made a DSL, and I can tell you right away that they're extremely difficult, they're hard to maintain, and they can be emotionally painful. So maybe we should really think about this decision before we do it, and if we do do it, I have the experience at least to do something with it. I suggest if we truly need something, let's consider some sort of alternative, such as Apple's new configuration language, Lua, anything. DSLs are probably not the way to do it. Just throwing that out there. What is a a DSL? A domain-specific language. Like, DSLs are great. I get it. DSLs can solve problems uniquely, but it can also be a huge pain in the ass. An example of a DSL is the following. I can go like this. Uh, I can go set, you know, uh, what is it? What is it? Something inside here, right? So I can set something in here. This is actually a DSL. Set is a keyword that sets a property in Vim for you to do something. It also has the exact same thing. You can also do all those things via uh, Lua now. Lua is really, really nice. Lua is a language I can look up how to use. Lua has lots of documentation. Lua has been well supported. Vim script, well, you better hope that you can find your problem. You better hope that you're not experiencing some weird edge case. You better hope that it's not poorly thought through, right? Like that's the problem about DSLs. And VimScript is going to be a much better DSL than anything you write. I just want you to know that in VimScript is horrible and it's better than anything you will create. <laughs> VimScript, it's zero and one indexed. Why? Because fuck you, programmer. <laughs> I don't know. That's why. All right, let's keep on going. Sorry, that was a long tangent. And I hadn't studied a single question of leet code or cracking the coding interview. This lack of foresight. By the way, that is, um, that's one thing that's really good about college because you should have gotten a, a really intense data structure classes. Doing good at data structure classes, you will always be able to do most lead code questions just off the rip. Because you can most lead code questions, most cracking the coding interview questions are just things you studied in college. They're just like, you know, they're just that. 
And so the only thing that I think really is good about lead code questions, by the way, is going to be DP questions, which you don't typically study in college or you do very little. Uh, and two, using arrays to solve problems. Often you're not using like arrays to store a graph. Uh, you know, you, most people use like an adjacency list. They don't lean into the adjacency matrix. And sometimes it's really, really difficult to use a bunch of arrays. Like Cityscape is just an exercise in how well you understand arrays, not really anything else. And so, you know, that's one of those like leak code nice things is that when you get onto a whiteboard, you're just like, oh, yeah, I can do arrays really easily. I've like I've used them a whole bunch. I'm pretty good at this stuff. You know what I mean? It all came back to haunt me on the day I've had the of right my link graduation. List several times. For most people, graduation is a moment of triumph. It's like the culmination of years of hard work. And I felt very sad graduating. I felt like as I, I, you know, when Frodo comes back to the Shire, it's just not home anymore. It's an end of an era. It's an end of an era. And I, 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 felt really, I felt really sad about that. You know what I mean? Because I knew it was over. Yeah, if you get a paper, you don't get a job. And so for me, that was like hard. You know, it was really, it was really, it was really hard. Because I knew that I, I'm, there, I don't know what the next era is, but it is the next era. And that was hard. That was a hard moment for me moving on to the next stage of your life but for me that day was the saddest moment i had experienced up until that point in my life looking back i realized that I so i do have to say one last thing the the fact that saruman was sharky i i still to this day i can't believe there's a bad guy named sharky in lord of the rings i just felt like that was kind of weird okay that's all i'm saying that's all i'm going to say about that we're moving on i had barely changed since the first day I walked onto campus. My work ethic was still terrible. My social skills were terrible. And I hadn't achieved the goals that I set out to achieve. And worst of all, I was not ready for this next phase in my life. And I knew that I was about to be forced into a deep, dark time before anything got better for me personally or professionally. I moved home. I do think a lot of, I, I mean, I do think our society in general, at least Western society, does encourage more adolescents longer. And I do think a lot of these a lot of these issues are extended adolescence issues. Um, you know, I grew I, I I I had the greatest misfortune and the greatest fortune to be able to grow up fast. And I do think that that helps is having some of that growing up fast because you know, you skip 10 years of doinking around till you realize what you really want to do. And I, I, I do think that that helps a lot. Again, I, I attribute a lot of it to being in the right place at the right time, you know, but self-drive and discipline is incredibly important. Absolutely. Home from college about three months after graduation. And at the time, I had not even begun to understand the weight of the position that I was in. I had yeah. no job prospects lined up. And even worse, I hadn't even made an effort to secure one. My resume, unimpressive to say the least. But I remember hearing about the intense demand for software engineers at that time and all the years previously. I tr One in the chat if you're kind of in this guy's shoes. I'm actually just curious. One in the chat if you're in this guy's shoes. Damn, y'all. Well, you're currently a student, so learn from this mistake, right? Twitter's dead. Twitter died. Pricked myself into believing that my computer science degree alone would be enough to land me a job. I mean, I spent four years in college, right? Surely that was enough to secure my future. A piece of wisdom Great that I've learned in the past few years. There are only two ways people change. People either change after deep self-reflection and self-improvement, or they are forced to change by circumstance and this circumstance was about to hit my life very very soon at the time base take base take you know the, the number the point one on his take is wisdom right the ability to make those self-reflection those the ability to make change before disaster happens is really like that that is the mark of a, a wise person i unfortunately have rarely been a wise person i've had a few moments in my life where I have done number one, 
But for the vast majority, I've done number two, unfortunately. I'm that guy. I learn best by uh, getting into horrible situations. You're still wise. If you can learn from a mistake, if you can learn from your mistake, you're still wise. You're wisest if you can learn from others' mistakes. You're wise if you can learn from your own mistakes. You're a fool if you keep making them. I looked around at my friends and classmates and saw them getting jobs at top tech companies. And I thought that I could do the same. I wanted to work for a unicorn startup because in my head, that's where I belonged. And it couldn't be that hard to get in, could it? But as I started applying to jobs, I realized just how misguided I really was. I submitted like... By the way, he also has that UCLA. Like, hopefully that really puts things into perspective. I had Montana State University, okay? I, I, I do, I do want to throw something out there. When people think of prestigious schools... Oh, yeah, UC Irvine? Okay, whatever. He had a school that people think tends to be a little bit more impressive than Montana State University. Just to be real there, okay? No one thinks Montana State University is going to be uh, – Montana ain't even – Montana's not even a state that exists, okay? There's California, California, Texas, and New York City. Like that's the three states in America. And credentialism did not help him here. So like that is really something you should uh you should really think about. Montana mentioned, let's go. Like you should really think about that. That credentialism is not going to help you. Now, I even think the day of graduating from you know MIT and these top schools, I even think that that in itself is also falling apart. I think that 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 it doesn't get you anywhere anymore, right? Credentialism is gone, and so you should really you gotta you know we are more towards a meritocracy in some sense. Because we're dropping that. So, 10 applications my first week. To I'm not like saying it. By the way, I'm not actually saying that's good or bad. I think there is something that's good about credentialism because we should have a place we can look to to say people that come out of this are really, really good. And if that's falling apart, there's something kind of sad about tradition and that kind of stuff, right? There is something sad about that. And I, I do mean that. That, that is, that is, there, there is a sad part to it. It's not 100%. Whenever someone says, no, that's 100% bad, I'm like, not all things are 100% bad. There's always, there's, there's sometimes a good part to that. I'm not saying it's great. As a, again, as an average Montana enjoyer, I did not get to enjoy a drop of credentialism. You know what I mean? Snapchat, Pinterest, Yelp. Thinking that they were easy targets while I worked. Ooh, Yelp. Ooh. Yelp might just be the single worst tech company. Okay. Like I I mean I under I I understand there's some really shady tech companies out there, but Yelp just might be like top three most evil companies. Like, dude, the extortion that they do on on small businesses is crazy, okay? It's crazy. They extort companies. Like, they genuinely do. Ooh, Yelp is like a, um, Yelp is like a, 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 like a local rating service, right? You know how when you go and you search up a restaurant and it's like, this restaurant has 3.5 stars. That's either like Google ratings or Yelp ratings. And Yelp is, uh, it's pretty bad. Better Business Bureau also. Like, anytime, like, the thing is, is anytime you find a rent seeker, you also have found something that's likely hyper corrupt. Anything that sits in between two things often can be quite corrupt. My way up to big companies. And then like TripAdvisor. Yeah, okay. probably the same so thing. So I applied to a few more jobs that I thought were in my skill level, like Dropbox, Groupon, Intuit. But again, Ooh, remember Groupon? The results were the same. Nothing. For someone who had been so go. naive, so deluded, and so used to getting what I wanted, this came as a surprise. My degree was not enough to get me hired. I even remember this one instance, two months after moving back home. I managed to secure an interview with a company in Southern California. And the whole time going through the interview process and the recruiter screens, I thought getting the job would be easy. I didn't spend any time preparing for this interview. And instead, I focused on learning how to negotiate my salary. And as you can... I mean, at least he's coming in with confidence. You know, like one thing can be said in life, being confident is a good thing. You know what I mean? 
Hey, yo, yo, yo. I do, I do, I do want to say, I do want to say, I, like, I'm not here to knock on this guy. This guy is like a bunch of kids. This guy represents an entire class of people, right? I, I, I'm not here to dunk on him. I think this is fantastic, right? Like, dude, I thought you could just drop LSD and smoke a little bit of meth and, and also have a great family life at some point. Okay, I'm not saying, I'm not Mr. I'm not Mr. Outstanding, okay? I, 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 it took me a while to get here, okay? I was just as deluded as this guy, just happened to be a different set of delusion. <laughs> you can't, you really can't. Like, you genuinely can't do those things. Yeah, it, 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 it could, it, I mean, genuinely, you could be right. It could be, it's one of the, it's one of the things that I think about all the time, which is uh, kids growing up in a situation in which they have money, right? Sometimes it can delude them to think that life just comes easily, right? But this is great. I actually, I really like this story. I didn't expect I didn't get the job. And in fact, I wasn't even close. I that remember hanging out bit. and talking with my friends afterwards. It had to we hurt were a little grabbing bit. a beer. I was talking about my interview, downplaying the situation, talking about how I didn't want to work there anyway. And as I wrapped up my story... And by the way, that didn't even matter, bro. That is literally the, the sorry bro for the person. Dude, it's cope. It's pure copium. It's beautiful. My friends just quietly acknowledged it, changed topics, and then we moved on. I couldn't really understand at the time why my friends were so quiet in response to my story. But now I can see how clueless and delusional I was and just how badly I struggled with self-awareness and humility. I see now. By the way, uh, I would I would just throw it out there. Not necessarily good friends. You know, like a good friend will be honest with you. Yeah, rotating phaser. You literally write, right as I'm saying, a good friend will, like, you know, like a good friend won't do it in front of people. A good friend the next day will talk to you, right? Like, if you're in a group of people, you should never call out somebody unless if it's like that egregious. Um, but generally... A good one-on-one -on -one conversation, if you actually think someone's being deluded, like, a good friend will take the time to be like, yo, dog, like, this is, this ain't, this ain't, this ain't good. You know what I mean? This ain't good. Okay, Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> okay, Aristotle, with your friendship definitions. Mr. Aristotelian guy over here. Now, how I came off to them. Here was this kid who hadn't paid his dues in life. He didn't have a job. He hadn't worked hard or accomplished anything of note. And he had a right to complain about job prospects. No one was going to tell me how misguided my thinking was. It was up to me to figure- By the way, someone should have. Again, good friends would tell you that you're goofing up, okay? I mean, for me, in fact, that statement right there is actually more of a condemnation of the people he was surrounded with than himself, right? You're equally deluded if you think friendship is just about having good times. Like, that's no real friend. It just isn't. That's not a real friend. That's a chum. <laughs> that's, a, that's a bud, right? That's not, uh, that's, not, that's, not, that's not real. Facebook friends act this way. Exactly. You're a Facebook friend in real life. Figure it out on my own. In yeah. the next few months, my job search became increasingly difficult. I was not aware that Fair weather friends, most like companies that. tend to slow down their hiring process at the end of October in preparation for the holiday season. <laughs> this was yeah, something that, that caught me completely off guard. And the true... Welcome to the real war, bitch! <laughs> I mean, that does happen. It's very, very true. Typically, you don't want to change a lot right before the holiday season. The pressure of the situation began to set in. It had been nearly five months since I graduated college, and I wasn't even close to getting a job. I found myself submitting dozens of job applications per day. I wonder if he was building things. I, he hasn't addressed it, I don't think. He's talking about the low. Uh, I wonder if he was like building things. Like, How was he preparing, or what was he doing to change? I hope that he uh, covers that, because that's like my big thing I keep thinking about, was what was the moment? while going through online forums, Reddit, or just any- 
Someone is asking, well, curious about Real Friends. Dude, just go Aristotelian on it, right? You got to have location, proximity of things you enjoy, and ability, like, and ability to have tough conversations, right? It's pretty simple. Like, it's really hard to be long distance friends. It just is. It's just simply like if you don't live near each other, if you can't see each other, it just it, it does become harder. If you don't have shared interest, it becomes even harder. It just does. Like that's like just like that. I mean, dude, some dude two thousand years ago with a beard and and marble statues said that. He's probably he's probably right. Good friends aren't common. Anything to look for advice on how to get a job. I was told to study leak code, to learn web frameworks, to build side nice. projects, okay. to network oh, with it. other people for referrals. And I just began to get completely overwhelmed okay. by the number of things I needed to do to get a software job. And I realized there were people out there pre -watch. that studied pre -watch. 10 times harder for 10 times longer and still were unable to get a job. And despite this, I mean, I say this all the time, which is like, if you're not willing to go really deep and really hard, wow, like, just remember, there's always someone that's willing to work harder than you. Now, you don't have to be the hardest worker. You don't have to be the most aggressive learner. But there's always somebody that is willing to go harder than you, that their life circumstance is more desperate than yours. And desperation will make people work much harder but you just got to understand that when going into it which means that you have to be willing to put in some hours i 100 percent couldn't be the engineer i am today without the countless weeks of 80 hours i'm not saying it's great i'm not saying it's perfect i'm not saying it's the way life should be but there's also a reality to the situation me submitting hundreds of applications i received very few responses in the month of december i was able to secure two on-site interviews with startup companies in San Francisco. In one of the interviews, the interviewer ended my technical screen early, probably because of my performance. And in As someone who's given many interviews, many, many interviews, including many at Netflix, hundreds at my previous job, you just got to understand when someone says, hey, you know, I'm not too sure about this, why are you using that? Or some phrase like that, right? What they're saying to you is, hey, man, you aren't doing this right. Let's take a step back. Let's try to think of a new way to approach the problem. Current way, skill issues, okay? You're skill issuing hard right now, and I'm giving you like a little warning, a little red flag that you're skill issuing. Let's walk back a little bit. Instead, opted into having a friendly conversation with me. He asked me the question, so what did you do in school? I knew what he was asking me. Failing interviews, it was painful, but that was nothing compared to seeing the disappointment in my parents' eyes. I Oof. couldn't help but think of the sacrifices they made to immigrate Oof. to this country working hard to attend school here asian moment people talk about yeah people talk i've heard many people talk about this <sighs> you know that's one thing that I, I love about my mom she was so proud of me that i just that i i wasn't using drugs right like that was like she was so happy you know and there's there's something magical about having a parent that just loves you <sighs> You know, even even when you're still a disappointment, they still love you. You know what I'm talking about? There's something very, very nice about that. To find a job here and to leave everything behind to make a better life for their children. And as I struggled to find a job, as I submitted 600 job applications to almost every company I could find in the state of California, I couldn't help but feel like I was letting them down. And at the same time, letting myself down people real. don't change it's real right there unless they go through a heavy amount of self-reflection or they are forced to by circumstance ironically this whole situation about me not being able to find a job it was jarringly similar to an experience i had just four years previously instead of a job search 
I was in high school and I was trying to get into top colleges. I had spent most of my high school years procrastinating, neglecting my grades. I typically like to brag that I did one day of homework in all of high school. I got a 2.16, not a big deal. Not a big deal. NBD. There's reasons why I may have gone to Montana State University. Just throwing that out there. I had a mediocre at best college application and yet I thought I had a chance to apply and get into top colleges because that's what my friends were doing. And when the time came to receive college acceptances, I found myself rejected by almost every school I applied to. I remember one of my SAT tutors sat me down and told me to never put myself in a situation where I wasn't preparing for the future ever again. And while some of that message might have stuck with me for a bit, obviously none of it stuck long term. People don't change unless they are forced to change. There's some, you know, it's funny that he remembers that statement. Isn't it funny how sometimes you'll have those moments with somebody where they say something to you and you know it's good advice? But it like there's this old adage that says the greatest distance in the universe is the distance between your head and your heart. And sometimes it's true, you know? Sometimes it takes, you know, like sometimes you can hear the exact thing you need and it's just so long before it actually makes it to the right spot. It's crazy. Is that a phrase from Romeo and Juliet? Maybe. I can't remember where I heard it, but it is it is it is actually it's an extremely good phrase. You know what I mean? It's an extremely good phrase because I know besides for the people that are like which head like I know you guys are memeing, but I'm just trying to be real here for a second Twitch chat. Can you get your can you get your your ass off the top of your head? Anyways, I would like to tell you after this point how I completely transformed, how I studied like 18 web frameworks until I became the perfect candidate, but none of that happened. Truly what happened came down to numbers and luck. Applying for jobs, it will always be a numbers game. This, oh, by the way, this, this ending and the morale, the morale of the story, part of it is a little disappointing. Just throwing it out there, like I was really hoping the change was that, like you know, he really embraced the suck. He really crushed it as he continued to apply. But it says, just like, gosh, you got lucky. Was no. It's honest exception. though. It's honest though. I had spent months trying to create side projects to put on my resume, trying to learn React, trying to read through cracking the coding interview, and finally, in January of 2017, I received a call from a tiny five-person startup located Let's go. in San Diego. I was Nothing beats lucky luck. enough Fact. to be asked technical questions in fields that I had prepped pretty well in the last few months. And even luckier... Mm -hmm. Nothing's better when you get asked a direct question word for word out of cracking the coding interview. So let's just pretend you had a singly linked list and you wanted to find a cycle in it. And you're just like, oh, really? I've never heard this. Tell me about it. Well, if I were a thinking man, which clearly maybe I am, I would assume that you'd probably want, ugh, like, it's almost like I could envision, like, a tortoise and a hare. And, like, one thing being able to speed fast while something else goes slow. And at some point, if there is a cycle, it's going to intersect. Gosh dang, I am smart. Never even heard of this question before. In fact, I'm not even sure what a tortoise or a hare is. I just know they exist, and I manifested this wisdom in the interview. This company was looking for a very specific profile of software engineer. Someone who was a new college grad, someone who could code and figure out problems, and someone who was willing to take a low salary. And so this was my yeah, I, low, I took a low salary. So please. far removed from my original delusions of working for Facebook or some startup unicorn. But after the months of failure, nothing was sweeter than this sense of success I had in the moment. By the way, this is a great reminder that the pull yourself up by the bootstraps, though, obviously everyone's going to be, oh, be toxic. Yeah, okay, shut up. There is something also really amazing about accomplishing something yourself. Being able to like get out there and do it and persist and get that W and know that you're the one that is trying to really push for that W. There is something about that that's really good. Like, it really has made me feel... Like, those are some of the things that makes me feel very good. You know what I mean? 
Sometimes I think of the scenario of if I didn't get that job offer. I wonder how long I would have been searching before I finally found one. A couple more months? Six months? A year? A couple years? Would I have just given up? It's difficult to tell, but it was definitely one of the first lessons in my life about how incremental progress every day helps you to reach your goal. If I wasn't studying leak code, learning web frameworks, applying to jobs little by little every day, even this random stroke of luck, it wouldn't have panned out. If you found- Again, it's not because it's luck, it's opportunity, okay? That's hard work, meets an opening, and you're already ready for it, okay? I don't, I, it's hard for me to call it, you know, like I understand that there's luck involved, the fact that you saw it, but luck is not always just luck. You know what I mean? Luck is when preparation meets opportunity, exactly. It's just like, you see these things and it's just like, I love this part, this last part, right? Where it's just like the perceived value of daily grind isn't really there, but what really is happening is you're growing up and you're actually getting better faster and you, like, so much of this is just all that hard work coming together. It's beautiful. On my story relatable in any capacity, you need to be the reason to make a change for yourself in life. At a certain point, no one will push you. No one will say anything to you. No one will force you to do anything. You will have to do it yourself willingly or be forced to by painful circumstance. That's a thumbs up. Oh, I must have already watched a video by him. Great video, by the way, created by Casey. That was a great video. Anyways, the name. You know what the name is, okay? Hey, guess what? The name is, the world's hard, and I absolutely love that we have the ability that we have. And you know what? Software engineering has been one of the greatest distributions of skills and pay to people. You know, the fact that I can be just some small Montanan kid and be able to go work at Netflix, I think is absolutely fantastic. I love the fact that people who have no ability, like no legacy, no rich parents, no super also awesome, amazing, everything, upbringing, all those things that they can actually make a real impact in an industry and get to be paid well, at least in America, like that is pretty freaking awesome, right? That is like that, that, that is incredible. The fact that we even have that as a potential opportunity is is incredible. And so I absolutely am 100% very thankful for the fact that I got uh, to be able to go in software engineering. I got to be able to try to make things that I want to make. I want to be able to do what we're doing now. Like that's a huge privilege. And I'm very, very happy about that. Because you know what? 97% of the world used to be farmers. There was one thing you, you would do, and that was what your dad did, which was farming. And if you just happen to be one of those extremely lucky few percentage that didn't have to do that, you probably died because someone stabbed you or raped you, then stabbed you or raped your wife and then stabbed you and also killed your kids because that was like most of the world. Average age, like 32 or some crap, and it was absolutely horrible. And everybody kept stabbing each other. Like, oh, man, you looked at me sideways, I stabbed you. That's why butter knives exist, because they used to use just regular knives, and people kept stabbing each other at the dinner table, okay? We had to round our effing knives to quit killing each other, okay? Shit was wild back then, and to pretend like somehow we live in a horrible day and age is crazy, okay? I haven't tried to stab a single person while eating a meal with them. I live in a golden age. Age of humanity. I don't die from accidentally cut myself on a little rusty nail, get tetanus and die. Ah, oh, shit, you just got bit by that thing. You're dead. Oh, you just got cut by some metal. You're dead. Oh, you played in the dirt and you had an open wound and you accidentally got tetanus from the ground, which does happen. You're dead. Oh, my goodness. Raiders happened, you dead. Oh, brigands, you dead. Oh, you're walking on the street because you wanted to go visit your neighbor, fi a neighbor five miles away and there was a thief, you dead. Like, oh my goodness, like how crazy were those times? A gen.